<laughs> What's for dessert, baby? Dessert? Here it comes. Did you ever wonder where your sweet tooth came from? Well, maybe it has something to do with the dessert that was trending when you were put on this earth. Here are the 10 most popular desserts the year you were born. Here we go. Chiffon cake, 1940s. Best cake ever? Best cake I ever had. Ever. If you were born in the 1940s, you were lucky enough to be born during the same year chiffon cake finally got the hype it deserved. This very light cake was first invented in the 1920s by Harry Baker, an insurance agent in Los Angeles. He wanted to make a fluffier, less dry variation of angel food cake, but more flavorful than sponge cake. It became the hit of Hollywood. Baker would sell these babies everywhere, from parties to the Brown Derby restaurant, and for 20 years, he kept his recipe secret and wouldn't tell anyone his special ingredient. That was until 1947, when Harry finally agreed to sell his recipe to General Mills, and the whole world was changed. Look at the neat and amazing inventions. In 1948, Better Homes and Gardens even published an article about their first new cake in a hundred years, revealing the recipe for an orange chiffon cake and calling it high light and handsome. The secret ingredient? It used vegetable oil instead of butter, which gave it its moisture and fluff factor. Chiffon cake truly took off from that moment and became one of the first baking trends of the late 40s. General Mills even released a chiffon cake mix in 1958. Its popularity might have died down a bit in the last few years, but that doesn't take away from its deliciousness and longevity. Oh, whoa, my dessert! Bananas Foster, 1950s. Easy. Banana. Fuck. Bananas Foster is a great example of doing what you can with what you have, and we have to say, we are very grateful. The now iconic dessert was invented in 1951 at Brennan's Restaurant in New Orleans by the Brennan family. At the time, the banana trade was a million dollar industry, and New Orleans was a major port of entry for imports into the United States. It wasn't uncommon for restaurants to receive ridiculously large shipments of bananas. As the story goes, Ella Brennan was asked to come up with a dessert in honor of the New Orleans Crime Commission Chairman Richard Foster. I'm thinking I'm gonna do something with bananas. Not knowing what to do and not having much time, she decided to go grab bananas, since they had so many, and just let her imagination go. After mixing butter, brown sugar, and cinnamon, she flambéed the bananas in rum and banana liqueur before serving it with a generous scoop of vanilla ice cream. And just like that, Bananas Foster grew into a southern classic and is still a staple in New Orleans today. Bananas Foster. Jello molds, 1960s. How do you make jello? Just mix it with water and let it sit. We can't talk about the 1960s without talking about the weird obsession people had with jello. It was everywhere. Recipe after recipe seemed to be made up using jello as the main event, ranging from savory to sweet concoctions. Not all very delectable for today's palate, but still. No table in the 60s was complete without a casing of jello with a bunch of something stuck inside, creating a jiggling centerpiece. Gelatin molds were an important part of post-war domestic life, and even though today we probably wouldn't go anywhere near something like that, they were completely in tune with the era. Plus, jello molds were practically in every single cookbook on the market, so people eventually caved in and started to accept that this was the new normal. I made my famous jello mold! They were pretty easy and fun to prepare and could easily be turned into a main dish using only leftovers. As common as they were, the neat, economical, and efficient savory jello molds had nothing on the sweet dessert it could turn into. One of the most notable jello recipes was the sparkling jello mold, which was made with champagne and fresh fruit, usually raspberries, and left every table feeling much fancier. Fit, portly, sportly, jello, hello! Chocolate fondue, 1968. We've got uh, milk chocolate. Swiss cheese, 
fondue. This particular dessert, on the other hand, is still pretty much the peak of tasty desserts. It's all about dipping stuff in melted chocolate. What's not to love about that? While Switzerland's national dish has been around for ages as a melted cheese dip, the chocolate version is a bit more recent. Chocolate fondue was invented in New York City in the mid-1960s by a Swiss-born restaurant owner, Conrad Egli. His primary goal was to add a dessert version of fondue to the menu, so he got cracking on his first recipe, nothing but heavy cream, Toblerone chocolate bars, and Swiss fire water, or Kirschwasser. Cheese, chocolate, cheese, chocolate. As soon as he introduced his dessert to the customers of Chalet Suisse, his restaurant, it caught on like wildfire. It quickly became the party food of choice, and you could basically find it in every department store. Fondue parties, which were already starting to pop up more and more, became complete with the addition of a dessert version with which you could dip skewers of fruit into pots of melted chocolate. By the 1970s, chocolate fondue practically became the social norm, and everybody started adding their own twist to it. It's one of the easiest desserts to do, and not too costly, either. Even though Chalet Suisse, the original restaurant that gave us this gem, is no longer standing, we will never forget everything it did for us. Say no more. I bid you adieu. Carrot Cake, 1970s. Oh, carrot cake! Mmm, <laughs> so moist! It's no secret that cake isn't exactly the healthiest of desserts, but it sure is one of the tastiest. Back in the 1970s, dieting and health-conscious lifestyles were slowly starting to come into style in America, but people simply weren't ready to say goodbye to cake altogether. This is where carrot cake was able to steal the show and shine bright. Even though it had been around for decades, it surged in popularity. As people were looking for lighter and healthier desserts, they turned to one of the healthiest-sounding cakes of all. After all, it's made with vegetables, so it has to be healthy, right? Oh, that was a tricky one. Don't get us wrong, it probably is much better for you than a triple layer chocolate cake with extra ganache, but at the end of the day, carrot cake is still a cake. The spice cake is also usually drowned with cream cheese frosting, so it might not be as innocent as people think. The frosting, however, is another thing that helped carrot cake set itself apart from other sweet desserts at the time, and still is an important component today. Nowadays, carrot cake recipes are pretty similar and just as tasty as they were back then. All you need is some cinnamon, buttermilk, cream cheese frosting, pecans for a good crunch, and a truckload of carrots. Cake? Heard about this cake stuff. <laughs> Tiramisu, 1980s. This is wonderful. Best tiramisu I've ever had. This classic Italian delicacy made with ladyfinger biscuits soaked in espresso, layered with mascarpone, and topped with cocoa powder is simply a must have. Obviously, tiramisu goes back more than 40 years, but it's in the 1980s that this delicious creation became popular in the US. Before that time, tiramisu was barely known in America, and we didn't know what we were missing. It started to appear on a couple of restaurants' menus across the country, but it wasn't until chef Lydia Bastianich opened her restaurant, Felidia, in New York City in 1981 that it began spreading in popularity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm eating tiramisu. Some of the chocolate powder just went down my throat. More restaurants started offering the treat on their menus, and soon enough, it was the new talk of every town. It wasn't long before chefs began debating about which of the dozens of recipes was truly authentic. Could you use regular coffee, or did it have to be espresso? Was it cocoa powder or chocolate? So many questions were asked, but no matter the answer, every variation was just as tasty as the original. If you were born in the 1980s, then you were a part of the rise of tiramisu, and that's definitely something to brag about. We love tiramisu. Is it really a group activity? Loving tiramisu? Molten Lava Cake, 1990s. Chocolate lava cake is not just undercooked chocolate cake. That's not what makes the center molten. 
Is there anything better than chocolate cake? Actually, there is, and it's a chocolate cake with an oozing center filled with hot and melted chocolate. Molten lava cakes are the definition of an ooey-gooey dessert and deserve all the praise in the world. These decadent little cakes were allegedly invented by accident by Jean-Georges von Garichten in 1987. He supposedly undercooked a batch of chocolate cupcakes, leaving the insides runny and warm, which gave birth to a major staple on dessert menus in America. Putting your spoon into a molten lava cake. The molten lava cakes really took off in 1991 when von Garichten put them on the menu of his restaurant Jojo. And understandably, people couldn't seem to get enough of the stuff. The classic recipe calls for four basic ingredients, eggs, butter, sugar, and chocolate, but you can then add whatever your inner chef desires, from nuts to fruit. Many variations of the treat have come out over the years, with flavors like lemon, lemon, caramel, strawberry, and even orange. But to this day, the most popular still remains the chocolate lava cake. Just like every good origin story, people from France to New York claim to be the true creator of lava cakes. But to be honest, no matter who the first one was to ruin cupcakes, we're just thankful someone did. Oh, thank you, God. Don't mention it. Frappuccino, 1995. Oh my God. This is literally the best coffee I've ever had. Easily one of the most iconic and popular drinks Starbucks has ever created, the Frappuccino. While yes, technically it's not exactly a dessert per se, it's still a very adequate way to treat yourself. It was in the hot summer of 1995 that Starbucks released the Frappuccino into the world, and it became an icon for the chain almost immediately. We owe everything about this delicious beverage to an inspired barista who wanted wanted to create a new fan favorite. The blend of coffee, milk, and ice was perfected by Andrew Frank, a former Starbucks employee responsible for the raging success of coffee-flavored milkshakes. Orange Mocha Frappuccino! The Frappuccinos quickly became a sort of rite of passage for teens and young adults in the 1990s and is still going strong even today. What started with only two flavors can now be enjoyed in over 36,000 different combinations, which is more than impressive. The first non-coffee version, known as a Frappuccino Blended Cream, was introduced in 2002. With dessert-like flavors such as chocolatey chip and vanilla bean, it really helped distinguish the Frappuccinos from regular coffee drinks. As the years went by, the Frappuccino began straying further away from the traditional flavors, which led to some very peculiar ones, like the very colorful Unicorn Frappuccino. Plus, we can't forget about the Frappuccino Happy Hour that takes place every year. I love it. Cupcakes, the 2000s. You're delicious. Who doesn't love cupcakes? They're tiny, they're cute, and oh, so tasty. Even though it feels like they've always been around, they peaked in popularity in the mid-1990s to the early 2000s. Before that time, cupcakes were all about kids' birthday parties. They had a reputation of just being sweeter versions of muffins. But these little sugary desserts soon became the popular kid on the block because of the show Sex and the City. As Carrie Bradshaw and her gang were often frequenting New York's Magnolia Bakery, cupcakes suddenly became more appealing than ever. Is that normal? You're asking me? Novelty cupcakes became the it dessert everyone wanted to eat, and long lines would form outside of bakery shops all over town. That's around the time all the crazy colors, toppings, and flavors became the new norm for cupcakes. Since the demand was rapidly increasing, numerous new bakeries started to pop up, and around the turn of the 21st century, the cupcake craze was crazier than ever. When the recession came about, the cupcake frenzy died down for a little bit and was replaced with the donut donut and cronut trend. But no matter how less popular they might be today, cupcakes will always have a special place in all our hearts. One cupcake. Cake Pops, 2008. Pop, pop! <laughs> and last but not least, people who were born in 2008 were a part of the cake pop revolution. 
It's like cake just keeps on getting smaller every couple of years, huh? Cake pops were invented by blogger Bakerella, also known as Angie Dudley from Georgia. She started as an amateur baker for fun, but ended up liking it so much she decided to start a blog to share her recipes. Amongst the ones she shared was cake pops, the tiny bite-sized cakes on a stick. People went nuts for the stuff, and cake pops soon took the country by storm. When I make cake pops, I have fun. And as long as that continues, so will I. In 2008, Bakerella even appeared on Martha Stewart's show to share her recipe with the rest of the world. These little treats are now being turned into works of art and are sold all over the place, even at Starbucks. The possibilities just seem endless when it comes to what you can do with cake pops. From the colors to flavors to shapes, you can do just about anything. So if you're a fan of cake pops, mark your calendars because February 1st is National Cake Pop Day, a day for fans to indulge in the delightful sweet dessert. I've got dessert! Hungry for more? Just tap or click another video, then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.